I've said before that voting Donald Trump out is only the beginning. And the analogy I used was that for the last three and a half years, we've essentially been playing defense. We haven't had the ball. We've been trying to get the ball back. If Donald Trump is removed by Joe Biden and becomes the next president uh, and Joe Biden becomes the next president, we haven't scored. We've just gotten the ball back. And that's when the fight will will really begin. And it's important to flush this out a little bit now because we're now only four months from the election. Donald Trump is becoming increasingly unhinged. There's really two ways in which voting Trump out will only be the beginning. Trump out achieves no progressive policy, like just removing Trump doesn't give progressives any kind of policy victory. We will only get progressive policy done if and when Trump leaves. If we demand it from whoever is the next president, be it Joe Biden or, or be it someone else in 2024, uh, the removal of Trump is the start of the possibility of progressive policy change, but it's not actually any policy change. So in that sense, getting Trump out is only the beginning. And I've talked about that before. But there's another side to this, which is really ugly. And we have to sort of come to terms with even if you remove Donald Trump, you've not removed Trumpism. Trumpism is a virus that is going to be around for a while. And by Trumpism, I'm talking about all of the really ugly stuff that we've seen for years now, the legacy of nepotism and corruption and the normalization of that in government, the mainstreaming of racism and xenophobia that existed before Trump, but it wasn't so brazenly out in public. That's one of the things that Trump has done. He's coalesced and sort of said to the xenophobes and racists, come back out into the public, come back out. You're welcome now. Uh, a ton of the behavior that people felt ashamed about before and would keep behind closed doors. Now it's become almost glorified in some sense that won't go away the day Trump is removed. The coarsening of language, as I call it, you know, grab them by the you know what, making fun of people with disabilities, tweeting white power videos. I could go on and on and on with dozens of examples. That's not going to go away when Donald Trump leaves office. And in fact, it could actually get worse uh, if Donald Trump loses and claims that it was rigged. We might see the absolute worst of it come out with guns to protest an election that Donald Trump may use to convince his followers that it was actually rigged against him. So if we see that type of violence, it could get worse before it actually gets better. And then what about Republicans? We also have to deal with the Republicans in the House and Senate who have been gleefully cheering Trump, some of them. Others have stood aside and allowed Trumpism to take hold and run rampant. You know, I'm thinking of people like Susan Collins, who's perpetually perpetually disappointed with Trump, but doesn't actually do anything about it. And arguably, the enablers are just as bad as the cheerleaders. None of that will be removed just because Donald Trump is removed in November. So the point here is not to put the cart before the horse and pretend Biden's got this thing in the bag. We have won nothing yet. We're still trying to get the ball back by removing Donald Trump in November. If and when that happens, it could be this November. It could be November of 2024 that Trump leaves. First of all, we may have to bear the brunt of a short period of even more chaos and violence in the streets from people who will simply refuse to believe that Donald Trump lost if indeed he loses in November. But then we've got to look at the Senate. We have to look at the House. We have to look at governors and we have to look at the culture that has been created, the culture of Trumpism. And this is why I keep talking about we get to vote in multiple elections in November. We get to vote for Joe Biden. But if you're in Arizona, you also get to vote for Mark Kelly to replace Martha McSally. If you're in Montana, you get to vote for Joe Biden, but you also can vote for Steve Bullock to be elected senator. Amy McGrath in Kentucky, all of these other options where we can replace senators who have either been actually supporting Trump or standing aside and not getting in Trump's way. They are all part of the problem. And then when you look at specific issues, you really I mean, it's hard not to be pessimistic. You realize what we are up against. If we remove Trump in November, we will have lost four years when it comes to the environment and to climate. We can't get those years back. And so what that means is that we're going to have to go above and beyond even what we thought we would have to deal with to handle the destruction that Donald Trump has done. And I will go even further. Uh, if even if Joe Biden defeats Donald Trump in November, we are going to have Trumpist type candidates at least in 2022 try to get in. 
possibly in 2024. So we're going to have multiple election cycles during which we will have to resist these malignancies so that we can try to end the national nightmare that is Trumpism. So again, let's not put the cart before the horse. Your job is to envision that when you go to vote in November, your vote could be the difference maker between Trump wins your state and Biden wins your state. Mathematically, it's very unlikely to come down to one vote. But if we all have that mentality, none of us will stay home. We will all go out and vote. That's number one. We don't put the cart before the horse. But remember that you might also be voting on a Senate race. And if the right thing were to happen in November, then and only then, Will we be able to say now the work starts now we spend the transition period figuring out how will we make Biden as left as possible? How will we hold Biden accountable to the concessions? And there have been some uh, that he's made to the more progressive wing of the Democratic Party. That's where it all starts. And it's going to be a very, very long battle. So, you know, last week or the week before I got a phone call from a viewer saying, you know, isn't the Senate really more important? Because even if we remove Biden, but we don't have the Senate, we can't do that much. It's all important. We get to vote for president and we get to vote for senator in some states at 35 races and we get to vote for House of Representatives and some governors and some state reps and states. It all matters. It's not one or the other. It's we should all participate and we are going to have to resist this viral virus of Trumpism. Uh, not only at every level in November, but likely for a few election cycles to come. And that is why I we, we just have to keep the pressure up on all aspects of this. We have to keep the pressure up from the perspective of voter suppression. We have to keep the pressure up when it comes to the, the TV ads. We have to keep the pressure up when with these other online groups that are putting together really good videos targeting Trump. We don't know what it is that will make a difference when we look back at 2016. Was it Comey's second press briefing about Hillary? Was it uh, Russian social media campaigns? Was it Hillary not visiting Wisconsin uh, towards the end of the? There's you will never know the one thing. And when you have such a complex election with 300 in a country of 330 million, about 120, 130 million votes, no one thing is ever going to be definitively the difference maker. These are all parts, and that's why it's so important. We have a fantastic program coming up for you today. Later on, I want to address this question of how is Biden's lead today different than Hillary's lead in 2016? Nothing is a foregone conclusion, but there are some important differences between the polling today and the polling in 2016, and we're going to talk about them. We also are going to talk about what will the debates between Trump and Biden look like? Um, I know that there are people convinced that one or the other is going to absolutely implode during the debates. I'm not so sure we are going to talk about that later today. And I also am going to dig into I previewed this earlier in the week. How does Justice John Roberts fit in ideologically compared to the people Donald Trump has put on the Supreme Court? We're going to talk about the DACA decision the LGBT decision and the abortion decision. All of that coming up today, plus your phone calls. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at D Pacman and make sure you are subscribed for free to the daily audio podcast on whichever is your favorite podcasting platform, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, your pick. We're on all of them. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. One of the things I make a priority on the show is not to perpetuate stigma for things that don't deserve it. We've talked about mental health. We've talked about many things where we should all just be respectful adults, period, and we would be better off. And Blue Chew can increase performance and give you that extra confidence you may be looking for. Bluechew.com, blue like the color blue, is the first chewable with the same FDA approved ingredient as in Viagra and Cialis. It can be taken day or night, even on a full stomach since it's chewable. It works twice as fast as a pill. Whenever the opportunity arises, Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed doctors. You don't have to go to a doctor's office. You don't have to wait in line at a pharmacy. It ships right to your door in a discreet package. They're made in the USA. And since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, it's cheaper than a pharmacy. And best of all, no more awkwardness. We've got a special deal for our viewers and listeners. Go to bluechew.com, get your first shipment free 
when you use our promo code Pacman, that's P A K M A N, pay just five dollars shipping. That's B L U E chew.com, promo code Pacman to try it totally free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice. And we thank them for sponsoring the David Pacman Show.